It's a no. fucking Alpine Nevi Olo. No joke? <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, that would have been useful yeah. to say. Yeah. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to yet another wonderful week of blind tasting. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and of course, thank you to Sometimes Always for organizing the wines. Lockie for choosing them on the day. And of course, you for dedicating your time to watch three silly buggers try to tease apart these wines, tell you how much they are and whether we'd not would buy any. Uh, of course, if you want to join in the discussion, jump in the Discord link below. You do get 10% off the wines. And of course, please like and subscribe. I get it. It's that shitty thing that we say every week. The YouTuber thing, it does help. It really does help. So please do it if you love the shit that we do. But enough from me, let's get straight into it. Uh, wine number one. Uh, looks like a nicely settled or well filtered little red number. Again, sitting around that medium sort of light red, not dark red. Obviously not a rosé sort of, then again, it could be a rosé, no, in my life. As soon as I say something on this show definitively, it just goes the other way. Oh man, I reckon this is Sangio. Just from the smell, that is gorgeous. Like a great Chianti. Some barber beans and a great Chianti. Love the tannin profile here. Nice and chewy, nice ruffly kind of corduroy tannins, which are really cool. Yep. Yeah, as I said, medium weight, medium body, red wine. For me, I probably want it to be slightly juicier, a little bit more, which is a bit of a theme on the show lately. I think it's gonna set me back. I'd happily pay uh, 60 bucks and I'm happily grabbing 12 bottles, which if you actually think about it, is the seventh wine in a row that I bought 12 of. If we continue on from last week's uh, tasting streak. So the streak continues, people. Wine number two. This is darker, it's much darker. Um, struggling to see through that at all, even you swing around. A lovely violet purple color, that's a really lovely hue to it. Oh, gorgeous. Really nice, like mulberry, blackberry. There's some like twigs in here in a positive way, I don't mean that negatively. Bright plums and black cherry. Smells great. It's got this really sort of nice chocolatey thing sitting through the middle of it. It's really rich, dark chocolate sort of vibe. Maybe like a Merlot or a Cab Franc or something. Cab Franc's probably completely unrelated to Merlot. My head goes old world, my heart goes Italy. Uh, my head then speaks up again and goes, maybe Montepulciano, maybe um, we're going even further south. And I think it'll sell off fantastically well too. Really cool old school wine that has this kind of freshness and this new world take. Um, brilliant, love it. Big 12 for me, no worries. Uh, golden hued white wine, a pristine clarity, a little bit of um, carbonic action going on. Oh, toasty, buttered toast. Good piece of sourdough that's just like sourdough crumpets with fresh butter, maybe a little bit of honey. It's not breakfast time, it's like four o'clock. It's not natural, is it? There's a little bit of like funkiness going on there. Wow, gorgeous, cool, like pristinely well made. Just the variety's a little bit weird. The variety's a bit, bit strange. I've uh, just not encountered uh, these flavors before in this style. Um, especially like given that it's such a golden hued wine. So already in my head, I'm I'm staying in Italy a lot for this. I think there's a bit of a theme here. Um, I'm gonna go $38 character, but it's just this like skinzy blend that kind of ends up ends up looking um, a bit more one-sided than it does multifaceted. So it's just it's got not massive identity or character or anything like that. It's really well put together, but I can't say I'm like weak at the knees. So let's guess Aligote again, see if that triggers the boys. Um, it probably will. I, I apologize to all the people out there who know what Aligote is and they're like, this is completely ridiculous. Aligote is usually pretty expensive, so I'll stick to my guns and say that it's around the $55 mark. Number four, gorgeous like garlic ruby red thing that's going on here. Smells like it's sitting in my wheelhouse as, as well. Kind of similar to the um, to the Natty Pinot that we had last week that ended up being wine of the lineup. Similar on the nose to that. It's a little bit less juicy, I'd say. Beautiful wine. The structure is gorgeous, very luscious. Great, um, slightly astringent back palate that I actually find is very welcome. A little bit like eating sort of charred vegetables or something like that. You kind of get that charriness. You're getting a charriness here, but it's presented really well, backed up with all this sort of luscious juiciness. Yeah, Pinot vibes, big Pinot vibes from that one. Lovely, soft, ripe, red fruit. The reduction on the nose is so delicate, it's so niche. Like that's gonna blow off, I know for a fact, within about like 10 minutes. Just needs a little bit of airing. Um, we'll see how it looks with the, the joint chat. But I can, you can see kind of red and purple and blue fruits all in here. I think this might be a really nice kind of a little bit too fresh 
Sangiovese that will develop excellently in the glass, in a decanter, and over the next two or three years. Maybe like uh, an Adelaide Hills Pinot with a little bit of interest in it. It could be a blend with something else that's giving it that little bit of tannin. But yeah, very cool wine. Moving on to wine number five, back to Inky. Oh, yummy. Yummy, a lot of oak. Big, big, big. Boom. Massive, massive whack of oak here. And it seems like whatever whatever variety this is just swallowed it up. Definitely some oak that kind of needs to fill out a bit. Vanilla y, coconut y thing. Yeah, some like aged hand. I don't make charcuterie boards very often. It's not prosciutto, but like heading in that direction. Salami, cured meats sort of thing. Very, very cool one. Uh, dense, powerful, weighty. Like everyone that loves old school. Um, in fact, if you like old school reds, you know what I mean, Red, old school reds, anything that's made sort of like maybe 10 years ago, back when like oak was a big deal. This is what they look like now, like what they should have looked like 10 years ago. There's so much going on that only time will really be able to give this wine justice. I can't really make a formal opinion of how good this is right now. I can only do that over the next decade really incorrectly or not identified as the characteristics of Syrah so I'll stick with that and I reckon it's probably again around that $40 mark so I'll stick with 40 for wine number five uh, all right so moving on to uh, white wine here uh, again crystal clear uh, brilliant clarity Ooh, this one is a little bit a uh, little bit too farty this one is a little bit too too reductive as well there's a bit of a theme of reduction here slightly hazy white wine could be like an unfiltered number sweet grilled nuts is like this cashewy hazelnutty honey roasted nuts is what i've got getting here wow that is soft oh my god that is so soft that's really good chardonnay that's really good something that brendan talks about is like oak integration in the sense that it doesn't taste like there's fruit and oak it tastes like Froke. What a power, like so good. The nose though, this is what happens when uh, reduction on uh, wine develops. So a lot of time when we talk about reduction, we're talking about hydrogen uh, disulfide. It will develop gradually over time to hydrogen trisulfide and then eventually it gets into this nasty little molecule called macaptan. That smells like it's kind of a weird thing for Australians to describe. It's like burger rings. 12 bagger for me, for sure. Um, I'm gonna go Sauvignon just because we haven't seen a Azura wine in a couple of weeks. Um, and I'd be happy to pay probably in the $90 sphere for that because it's so good. Oaky, citrusy with a little bit of acid on the end. Um, really nicely done. Probably like the shardy that we had last week was sensational and this is up to that standard as well. Um, got a sneaking suspicion it might be on the cheaper end though. I, don't, I can't put my finger on why, but something's just telling me that this might be an absolute steal. Uh, so I'll put down $27 for this one. I just don't think I'm ever going to buy a dozen Chardonnays, but this is about as close as it comes for me, especially if it's sitting, you know, down at that price point which we've established. God damn. Excellent, excellent stuff. Um, I've been treated again. Uh, really cool little wine up, very varied. Some sleepers, some bangers, uh, some I want to understand more, but there's been no bad wine. I didn't buy less than three this time, so like all, all of that ticks all the boxes for me. Really great lineup. Let's see what the boys. Sweet, cool. We are back. We have six awesome wines. It was a little, mm. it was a bit of a winner this week. I was actually really stoked uh, with, uh, with, with how we went. What did you guys think? I really liked it. There was nothing bad. I liked a lot of it. Um, I bought decent amount of everything. There was nothing below three. Yeah, uh, similar to you guys. I didn't have anything below a three, but I also didn't have anything above a nine. So like I didn't quite get to the twelves, but I, there were some wines that I was like, ah, this isn't for me, but I guarantee that the guys are going to like this one. But let's start off with the first one, which I thought was fantastic. I was all about this. Twelve bottles straight up. Did you thought it was Nebbiolo? No, I thought it was San Giovese. Really? Yeah. It was San Giovese. Yeah, what I figured out over the last couple of weeks is that we need to sit down together and drink some Grenache because I've got no idea what Grenache is because I keep yeah, guessing true. these wines as Grenache. And if it's, it's got just, tannin, yeah. it's a grippy, it's not Grenache. Okay. And if it's yeah. got acid, like it's high definitely acid, not definitely Grenache. not Grenache. So it might look like that, it might taste like that, but if it's got, if it ticks the tannin in the high acid box, it can't be Grenache. Well, that's probably not Grenache then, ladies and gentlemen. I reckon we should do some like um, deep dives on varieties. Just yeah. like, and just try to uncover like what they actually are like. Well, would you guys be interested in that? Yeah. Would you guys be interested if we started to tease away exactly what our thinking is to, I guess, um, pick the varieties. juice, the yeah. juice, what the varieties, what we're looking at? I mean, yeah, personally, um, yes, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be very helpful um, to someone. What's the bet? Uh, what, I've got 60 bucks. Uh, 40 for me. 25. I Ooh. thought it might have been a cheaper one. I only had three bottles of it as well. I would happily pay 25 bucks for this. Makes cool. yeah. nice. sense. Slot. Yeah. yeah, definitely in that uh, premium price and it's premium wine. 
Yeah, it's Rosalie Voltolino. It's a uh, fucking Alpine uh, Nebbiolo. No joke? <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, that would have been useful to say. Yeah. <laughs> bang, bang. Lombardi. Uh, Rosso uh, Voltolina. So the Valley of Voltolina. 100% Neviolo. Italian. Uh, yep, yep. Guys, I love it. I love it. I think they're presenting like really, really good quality wines at really good quality price points. And to be honest, do you, have you seen the vineyards in Voltolina? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No, they, they, they are what, uh, I think the, the, the Italians have a word for it, but it means heroic viticulture. That's fun. It yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is like, it's gotta fucking be, uh, it's gotta be, this. It's gotta oh, be like that. mountain goats picking the grapes. Sort Legit. Of thing. Like, exactly like it that. It has to be a minimum of 30% steepness, and then you can get qualified for heroic viticulture. It's fucking cool. <laughs> it, is, it is crazy, and the fact that you're getting these at these prices, bonkers. Like, so, yeah, I don't mean to poke fun at sometimes always. It's very well justified, the love of Alpine Nebula. It represents we a remarkable good We haven't had one for a few value. weeks. Yeah, we haven't had one for a few weeks. I just, uh, they stick out of my mind. Uh, uh, number two. Number two. So, we're going down. I thought I wasn't going to like this, and I did, you know. Same. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Absolutely loved this. this Chocolate was pudding. Like, this rich kind of brambly, like, blackberry mulberry like leafy thing. It's like all class cabinet for me. It is, yeah. it is. Oh, I really liked this. This is awesome. Remember mulberries? Yeah, mulberries. vividly. Yeah, Had one in primary school. Remember silkworms? Did you used to get silkworms off mulberry trees? Uh, nah, I used to talk to my friends. Um, so. <laughs> 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 I wanted six bottles and 40 bucks. Uh, 12 bottles, 65. Uh, six it. bottles, 49. Yeah, we were up there. We thought it was primo. What do we got? Yeah, yeah boy. Okay. Brunello. Something. Dude. Well, Lagrain? What? Dude! What? Lagrain from the Macedon Rangers. And so who would have thought? John Cooper as well. Yeah. Uh, so Cobalt Ridge, uh, some of the, the like, like he's the guy, I think, within that area. So, so yeah, like this this, this is his family. This yep. is I think this is his parents' thing. That now he's broken up and done this sign thing with his own name, Josh Cooper. But I think he's one of the winemakers. And, and this is like, you know, such an amazing quality wine in respect to, to other stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, is... we slammed that Syrah the first time. Then we had the next vintage of it and we and all it loved fantastic. it. Yeah. And then we've had this from the Cobalt Ridge and it's great. Like, best Legrain I've ever had. That is amazing. All right, moving on to the first white wine lineup. Um, bit vexed by the variety. Do you guys have any guesses? I, I'd take nah. a stab. Nah. Uh, my new favorite guess is Elegote when I don't know because I like it. it's a fun word to say. Curious to know what it is. Mm. Um, yeah. But I'm willing to spend the magical 38 number. I was 35. I thought for some reason this was going to be more pricey. I had it for 55 bucks, but I only wanted three bottles of it. Cool. Lucky. Hey. There you go. In that $30 yeah. slot. Yeah. Pantalon. Greco. Pull Greco. Greco. Pullion Greco. So you got to be careful with this. Got to be careful. They'll say it's Greco. It's not Greco. It says Greco. I understand that. And this is the thing because if you rewound a couple of weeks ago, uh, Noah actually said something, and I want to want to correct it for everyone that I think it was like Zabibo is also Greco. Uh, Trebbiano is Greco. No, it's not. not. Trebbiano. Trebbiano is Uni Blanc. You sure? Yeah. Oh, it's Uni Blanc. It's it's the most tasteless grape variety they use in cognac. Greco is Greco. <laughs> Grichetto uh, is not Greco. What is it? It's Grichetto. It's oh, its yeah. own variety. I'm fucking so wrong, eh? I think that's what you, you might have said. Or no. said there was a variety that was also Trebbiano. Trebbiano was also Greco. Now here's something because I I was vexed over this. Why? Because no, you're pretty like you're pretty suave on this sort of stuff. And why you would say something like that? I was like, wow, that's not correct. Well, it is correct. And I think and this is this is another really good example of it. Trebbiano actually is and isn't Greco. Uh, Greco de Tufo is specifically a variety. Greco is a term that they typically will use in Italy for any variety that they don't know of, but they believe originated in Greece. What so the they, 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 they describe a whole plethora of different varieties as Greco. Trebbiano was known as Greco for a very long time, was referred to as Greco. That's Some southern Italian uh, producers call it Greco. Puglia doesn't grow a lot of Greco. It's very close to Campania, and I'll be hard-pressed to believe that this is anything to do with Greco. All right, things picked up. Things yeah. picked up from here. Uh, 12 bangers straight away um, on this. A big fan. And I think this was the one that I encountered. And I was like, this is <coughs> reductive. In fact, I think both of these were reductive. But I actually put 12 here because I believed it would have blown off by now. I think it has. It, it absolutely has. This, I when I tasted it, I was like, oh, it's really tannic. It's not showing all that much. And then over the time of the tasting, it's like growing more and growing more. How much was it? Oh, it was good deal. Cheap. I think I know what good it deal. Is. I think I know is it Sven Josh? Is it Sven Ooh, Van Gaard. Well done. Van Gaard. Well done. Fuck Fucking yeah. Fucking Grenache. Well done. Yeah, it is Grenache. That's Grenache. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, um, the, maybe the great Grenache winemaker in Australia, and this is his, he's like... He's said this a couple times, yeah. Like, he is. Like, his handle of Grenache is bonkers. Yeah. What's his name? 
Uh, Michael Corbett. <laughs> just testing him. You guys always say these things. I can never pull you up on it, but I've got the fact sheet. Mate, very impressed. Mm -hmm. Hard to top it, and I think it could be right here. I was a big fan of this too. Oh yeah. Old school done really well. It, smell, it smells like it smells like cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it is tobacco. -y. <laughs> it is tobacco. -y. Tobacco -y. 55 and 12. I thought this was really cool, really fun, really structured. Um, and I'm just a bit of a tragic for, for old school wines like this. It's really like cool. Like six for 40. Uh, it's thinking, yeah, like old school Serrari, that Absolute. sort of. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly yeah. what I was thinking too. <laughs> yeah. With Serrari in it as With well. Serrari, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I want a three for 40 bucks. I was, yeah, I was into it, but I wasn't over the moon about it because I don't think I'd drink it heaps, but I would love to see it over like a decade aging as well. Mm. Really cool. Yeah. Oh! Whoa. No vase away. Nah. Nah. Corn Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's yeah. cool. Shiraz Syrah. That's awesome. Syrah. <coughs> so, yeah, Syrah from the, one of the great homes of Syrah in the Rhone Valley. Uh, forgotten about after Cobro Tea and even more so probably St. Joseph because that's where you get the value. But Corn Ars kind of sp like splits the middle of quality and like value. And Mark Hazmer. Aussie, Australian winemaker. Well. Yeah. In Rhone. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Aussie in Rhone doing doing very Aussie stuff with very Rhone varieties. The killer wine. I, I would still pay that amount. Like like when you're pricing wines like Cornas and Co Roti and stuff like that, like you need to it's a different ball game to price Throw the things. tax on it. Yeah, oh, it's just, yeah, it's a quality tax. It's a rarity and scarcity tax. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would, if someone was like, hey, dude, I've got a corn ass here from an Aussie winemaker, 108 bucks. But, like, yeah, I'm going to treat myself. Oh, oh, that's a, a birthday day. wine. A little double. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you wouldn't it's, be disappointed. It's cool. It's on wine. the company card. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> All right, last wine, my least favorite lineup. I had one bottle. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I didn't like it. I thought it was just pretty well made Chardonnay. I thought it was epic, like there Jura. Really well integrated and stuff. No, that kind, there, that honey nut roasted. There was a reductive thing yeah. on this that looked like McCaptain, and I reckon I was wrong because I can't see it now. Yeah, it was just blown off. Because it's it's just, so it's, McCaptain smooth. usually wouldn't, but there was a it. it McCaptain's this sort of onion onion powder yeah. thing. It's yeah. like really, really, really developed um, hydrogen disulfide. Uh, yeah. But yeah, loved it. I was 12 bottles and 90 bucks for me. I was six bottles and I thought it might be really cheap. I said $27. <laughs> <laughs> could, could, you could be lucky. Could be, uh, but if I would be guessing 38. A magic Don't number. Go. A magic number. Yeah, I'm a bit of a trend breaker. Um, how much was it? Ooh. 38 with inflation. Yeah, big inflation. Big yeah. inflation. American inflation. Kerner! Oh, wow. Damn. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's, that's definitely <laughs> the nicest looking uh, Vermentino I've seen out of the country in a long time. That is but so besides good. Besides their Pagato. Their Pagato uh, is fantastic. the next level. Uh, that is so cool. Uh, that 10 is so point, cool. 10.9% Clair Valley Vermentino. Um, look, I have honestly, when I originally tried this wine, I was like, boys, why don't you just make more Pagato? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, because yeah, that yeah, wine yeah, yeah. is so good. Why are you making this? My mind has changed. That's fucking great. That's amazing. Uh, guys, thanks so much uh, for chiming in as well. Thanks uh, so much for, for uh, tasting through and having a bit of fun. Bit of a varied mixture. Yeah, Again, very varied. Wine of lineup. Yeah, I'm yeah. more than happy to call that one. Yeah, that was yeah, tasty for me. That was killer. Hands killer. down. That Hands was down, 12 on that. Grab some, it's awesome. And just grab anything. Le Petit Vanguard. Le Petit Vanguard, Vanguard. Anything. But well anyways. Yeah. Till next week. See you next time. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I want.